here we are. A different world than it was last year, right? A different country than it was last year. How many like the, how people like the direction that things have taken over the last, oh, five months or so? I think we're all a little bit dismayed. And I know that personally, I didn't think we could ever go to a place like this again. Didn't think it was possible. I thought we had kind of risen above that. Risen above wanting to really destroy the environment for profit, just wholesale. I know it goes on, I know it's been going on forever. But I thought that it just wouldn't happen to this degree again. But I was wrong. I was wrong about the fact that 20% of the population of America could, could vote for someone like this. And could vote for someone like this because, not because they wanted him, all that 20% didn't want him to destroy the environment, but there were a lot of good people who had other concerns, who voted for him for their own reasons, who were misled or just thought, didn't quite think it all the way through. So here we are in this world. Now, during election time, there were a lot of really important issues being thrown around, right? Let me ask you this. What if, before the election, it came out, they figured out that undocumented immigrants were killing between 80 and 200,000 people per year in the United States? What if that came out before the election? What do you think the main election topic would have been? Undocumented immigrants. They're killing 80 to 200,000 people per year, right? What if they found out that terrorism was killing 150,000 people worldwide each and every year? What if they found this out? You think that would have been a big election issue? Yeah, it would have been all they talked about. Well, let me tell you that 80 to 200,000 people did tie every year, but it wasn't the result of undocumented people in this country. It was re the result of air pollution, avoidable, preventable air pollution. 80,000 people per year. What's that 150,000? 150,000 people die every year from climate change currently according to the World Health Organization, with actual statistics. Now, by 2025, the World Health Organization says that it's not going to be 150,000 people dying every year, it's going to be 250,000 people per year. You have to understand that climate change is very related to what we eat. How many people know that, that the largest single contributor in your daily lives to climate change is the food that you eat? specifically the meat and dairy and the animals that you eat. All right, good. Now there are a lot of other things that contribute to climate change, but as far as the impact that we personally have, that is key. So why weren't people, why weren't politicians talking about these issues where these hundreds of thousands of people are dying every year? I don't know why they didn't speak about it. It could be because there was some money somewhere. I don't know, I'm not friends with any of these guys. But suffice it to say that they were focusing on issues which are rather irrelevant and their impact minuscule compared to these other issues. So once, he, once we got our new president, who does he put in power? Well, you, you guys know already, head of the EPA, climate change denier. All the scientists, 97% of them say the same thing, but Scott Pruitt, he knows better. In fact, he recently said, well, despite the fact that all those scientists, those very esteemed and studied scientists over decades, have said that this climate change is a result of all these gases, including carbon dioxide, I've determined that carbon dioxide is not a primary greenhouse gas. Oh, really, Scott? Oh, okay, well, it's good to know that you know better than everybody else. But this is who's in government. He also determines just a few days ago that this chemical that's used on almonds and various agricultural products that causes lowered IQs in kids and memory loss and ADHD and other brain problems, he determined that that wasn't a problem and they're not going to ban it. Oh, wow. Good thing we have a man with, with, who knows better than all the scientists. But it's not just the head of the EPA. It's the USDA guy who, who, uh, who is, used to be a uh, chemical agriculture person. He actually had a chemical farm, a chemical producing facility. He's also a big supporter of factory farms and chickens in Georgia, the mass slaughter and enslavement of chickens. And he actually blocked regulations that would regulate 
being kinder to animals in these facilities and also watching out for the welfare of the workers in these facilities and also regulating uh, factory farm waste. So we've got people in charge of this, and I could go on and on with this list, that all the people in the key portions of government are all people who are blocking environmental protection, against protection of animals of any kind, and for rampant, unblocked profit at the, ex at the expense of our health and at the expense of our environment. That's all the bad news. Here's the good news. Are you ready for the good news? All right, here it is. I think we have given all of this ridiculous, factless, profit-based stuff that's happening at the top, I think we have an opportunity here that we have never had before, at least during my lifetime. The opportunity comes from having this dark cloud running government. And this is not a partisan speech, by the way. I'm speaking from the perspective of an of a environmentalist, from the perspective of someone who cares about people's health and the perspective of someone who cares about animals. This has nothing to do with any party, okay? So Republicans, Democrats, liberals, forget it. All the same to me. Uh, good, bad, it's all, everyone has their interests. This is not partisan. But the fact is, when we have this dark cloud of environmental denial here, the rest of us become empowered. Now we become empowered because we understand that there's no more waiting for them to do something. Look, I've been doing this work for 27 years. I've been teaching people about the enormous impacts of meat and dairy production on our health, on the environment, the destruction of the rainforest, the climate change, the greatest cause of climate change that we can, that we can impact in our daily lives the impact on biodiversity loss, the impact on world hunger, which millions of people die every year and we're wasting so much of our food. And I thought any one of these facts, and also the suffering of the animals, you've got your dog and your cat and you love them and yet you go to lunch and you eat a burger. And I thought any one of these facts are strong enough to move people to just stop eating meat, just like that. It's not the case. People need motivation. Now, how many of you out there are vegan? Okay, how many of you have friends who are environmentalists and are not vegan? A lot, as do I. I'm here to say that that time is over. No environmentalist, people who care about the environments, people who care about the health and welfare of people and animals, no one can now say, well, I'm going to do this environmental work, and I'm going to believe these things, but I'm not going to change my diet. That time is over. You know, in the past, they felt okay ignoring, because as I mentioned, the motivation wasn't there. But these same people, would you agree with me that they are irate about Donald Trump being in office? Upset, irate, just stupefied, they can't believe it? Here's the solution. Make America green again. It's that simple. Make America green again. What does that mean? That means that you and I and your friends who are environmentalists have the power to change the world without our leaders. How do we do it? Well, one of the things that we can do, which is the most powerful, is going away from meat and away from dairy. If everyone were to do that, it wouldn't matter what Donald Trump did and whether any, any of his advisors did. The world would change rapidly. To, to help facilitate this, though, we're creating a website called Make America Green Again today. And what you're going to be able to do is go on that site and say, all right, I'm not going to just complain. I'm going to say, I'm going to do this action. Cut out the meat, cut out the dairy. I'm going to get clean energy in my home. We'll tell you how to do that. Uh, I'm going to uh, reduce my recycle. I'm going to stop water waste. I'm going to turn my heat down, et cetera, et cetera. All of these things that you can do, which are going to have more of an impact per person than what they could possibly do up there. Because when you spend your money in a particular way, you are creating a market. When you create a market, you create jobs. When you create jobs, you create community involvement in this being the way things are. Now that's what's happening to energy. They're trying to push coal and they're trying to push nuclear. But coal and nuclear became obsolete 
not just because of the environmental devastation in Fukushima, they became obsolete, be obsolete because of the cost. When you look at the cost of healthcare associated with, with coal energy, it is nowhere near, nowhere near as cheap as wind, as solar. Now, I believe in doing everything possible. I've been vegan for 37 years or so, so I have whatever the math is. It's been a long time, but I also have solar panels on my home. So I have no electricity use. I also have geothermal heating and cooling in my home. No oil use. If you care, you've got to act. And if you haven't acted yet, that's fine. This is the time to do it. If you have friends that haven't acted yet, that's fine. They have time to do it today. Make America green again today. A lot of organizations are saying, look, there's all this horrible stuff going on in Washington. Here's the solution. Give us your money. Right? Have you gotten millions of letters like that in emails? I have too. And you know what? I think that's a good idea. Give them your money to the degree that you can afford it. But I think the solution, the real solution, is to act on your own and create it. Make America green again today. Come see me. I'm going to be over there. And you can sign up to the Make America Green website. And when it comes out, you can go on and you can pledge. And your pledge will be tallied along with everyone else's. You can see all the carbon that you've saved from in the atmosphere. You can see all the water that you've saved. You can see all the rainforests that you've saved. You can see that the actions that you make actually make as big a difference as our leaders make. And this action, these actions that we take, are not reliant upon some organization taking your money and then asking someone else to do something and them asking another leader to go do something and then maybe the legislation passes. No, it's a direct action that cannot fail. That is the action of the future. That is the action of today. So I'm with Healthy Planet. I've been doing this for 20 some odd years. And I thank you so much for listening and being the change that needs to be created. Let everybody you know, speak up, be the change. Thank you.